It's the 2K Sports pregame show. Hey, Ernie Johnson here, and I'm joined by Kenny the Jet Smith and Shaquille O'Neal. Welcome to the NBA on 2K Sports. Our matchup tonight taking place in Toronto, the Air Canada Centre, as we watch the Raptors go up against the Golden State Warriors. Well, for the Warriors, they've got an opportunity tonight to sweep the season series two wins to none. The coaching staff commented that they feel confident coming into this one. Well, when Kevin Durant joined the Warriors, one of the big questions was how Klay Thompson would adjust. He already had to share the spotlight with Steph, and now there's another superstar joining the fray. So that being said, a year into the experiment, how do you feel his role has shifted on this team? Well, oh, okay, go ahead, Shaq. Yeah. Well, you guys fight over it. No, he's they all both want to talk. No, because we're well, going to share a role. I was, I was talking to Underdog the other day. I was anxious. Great question, Art. I was anxious to see who's getting uh, multiple shots. And they're all taking the, the same amount of shots. You know, I, I think Clay's going to get a lot more wide open as a result of this move. But they're, they're all taking similar shots. Well, you know, Clay is probably the third option. But what a third option to have. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. But he's probably really getting easier shots than he's ever got in his career. He, the, the defense has to shift. They have to go double team. I'm sure he's not upset. And winning heals all ills. That uh, just about wraps it up. <laughs> heals all ills? What the heck is heals that? all ills. All oh, ills. I thought it said heals all ills. Are we going fishing? Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the NBA. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard. We'll be bringing you an interconference matchup in this one as the Warriors take to the road. This is Kevin Harlan joined by Greg Anthony, Steve Smith, and on the sideline, David Aldridge. This game will wrap up the homestand here for the Raptors. And, of course, JaVale McGee, out his presence, they'll have to overcome the hole there. And it's a trade that it, it caught me a little off guard. I have to be honest, Kevin. He, he played such a big part for this team and really the last guy I expected to see them move. Now it's ended down to David Aldridge standing by from the sidelines. David? Well, Kevin, one of the strengths of this Toronto Raptors team is its continuity. DeMar DeRozan said it goes a long way. Everybody knows everybody's game. It's just second nature now. Sometimes chemistry can beat talent, and I think we have that chemistry, given they have seen a lot and grown a lot together. That shared experience and corporate knowledge so important, D.A., thank you. Now we'll see two of the top defenses in the league go at each other here, Smitty. What do these teams do so well defensively that make them stand out? Well, they first, they communicate. They rotate well. They close out. But what they do is they, they make you play to your first, second, and make you get all the way to the third and fourth option. They take away those first two or three options. Boy, That's what makes these not. teams so good on the defensive end. Well, like you were just saying during our break, contest, contest, and always contest, huh? Yes. All right, let's set the floor, courtesy of Gatorade, all fueled up and ready to go. So for the Golden State Warriors right now, the sharpshooters Curry and Thompson are at the one and the two. Durant and Draymond Green, talented forward duo, and it's Cousins in at the five down low. And so it's the Raptors getting on the board first. Curry dishes to Cousins. Curry against Lowry. Durant the pass to Curry. Just five to shoot. The basket good off the assist from Durant. Curry's got his first three points of the game. Stephen Curry's release is beautiful. Ibaka with a screen on Green. 
DeRozan with it. We saw him go on a scoring rampage last game over Green. And the shot falls short this time. Right side Durant. It's stolen by Ibaka. Outside DeRozan. Steps back and drains the jump shot. Defensively, you hate to see DeRozan in the painted area. Shoots a high percentage from that area. Toronto on defense. Tough loss coming against Cleveland in their last game play. Yeah, and they were just shaky at times when it mattered most in that game, and it cost them. You know what? They were awful offensively. Labor to score on any level. Last break. Here come the Raptors. Ibaka, no luck. That was very tight defense. He tried to force the layup anyway. I think that was a questionable decision. Outside for Durant. And then Durant with the dunk. He was wide open. Reason why? Stephen Curry is a fantastic player who quickly got it over to his teammate. The Raptors have gone two for four from the field so far today. DeRozan against Thompson. And DeRozan kicks to Lowe. Screen by Ibaka. Six on the shot clock. Valanciunas. The shot. No good. And it's the Warriors taking it the other way. They put up a nice win against the Bucks the last time out. And I felt like they came out of that with a terrific game plan, especially on the offensive end. Yeah, they had great, great play calling. And then the execution was on point. Outstanding effort all the way around. The Warriors trailing. Outside Curry. And in this first quarter, about three minutes played. It's Thompson off the drive over Lowry. And he wills that one in, sinking right through off the back iron. He's looking confident right from the opening tip. And DeRozan kicks to Valanciunas to the right side. Screened by Ibaka. Here's Hananobi. The shot off that time. Great D that time from Green. Nice D from DeRozan. Ah, nice move inside. Has the defender beat. Just fails to finish. And we're just over three and a half minutes into the first quarter. Off the screen. And he knocks down the jumper. DeRozan's got eight. Strong start here early. Four of his first five made. Now here's Curry. He picked up 21 points in their last win against the Bucks in Milwaukee. Pass to Cousins. He kicks it to Green. And so he draws the foul on the shot. A trip to the line to shoot two. And Draymond Green just does so many things well on the basketball floor. But, but to me, above all else, he, he really is an elite defender who allows this team to be creative with their lineups. You can just put him on any player at any position and feel comfortable with his impact. He's off on the first. And Green, it just seems that as long as he's going to be in the league, he'll be in contention for Defensive Player of the Year. Draymond Greg has been that dominant on that end of the floor. Yeah, no doubt about it. And one thing's for certain, you don't want to go at him when you need a bucket. Views it as a challenge, almost an insult, if a guy wants to attack him. And he just has a knack for making winning plays on the defensive side of the floor. Draymond, a former second-round draft pick, always plays this game with a chip on his shoulder. Valanciunas, good. Here's Curry. Five points in the game. Screen by Cousins. Durant for three. Thrills the three-pointer. Five points in the game. You see how quickly Durant sets up for the catch-and-shoot shot, giving the defense no chance. Screen by Valanciunas. They set the pick. Pass to Lowry. From outside the arc, Cousins pulls it in. 
Cousins has got three rebounds now in this one. Curry against Lowry. Green, the screen. Thompson outside. Just five on the clock. His first shot coming late. Ibaka with some nice D. And you see why his reputation is so strong defensively. He allows no separation. And so many defenses are not designed to take away the mid-range jumper. But he's given nothing away. Thompson outside. Three-pointer. That's good. And a nice assist from Durant. Thompson's got himself on the board with three there. How about the passing? They are moving the ball without any thought, without any individual agenda. Abaka goes in. It's rebounded by Golden State. Their last encounter was in Oakland. Yeah, and looking back at their last game against this club, they were badly out-rebounded. Now here's Cousins coming off a stellar performance against Milwaukee. Green dishes to Durant. Curry outside, buries it from three-point range. Curry's got a couple of threes now in the first for the Warriors. The defense a step slow, and you can see the results. Now Lowry, quiet so far offensively, searching for his first points of the game. Here's Ananobi, defended by Durant. They need this one. Ananobi, good. Solid screen by Serge. Quick enough to get to the spot. Strong enough to hold his ground. Green, the screen. Curry passes to Thompson. High post Cousins. It's rebounded by Ananobi. And that's a surprise. He's usually deadly for mid-range. Count it. Now it's just a three-point warrior lead. It is so hard to stay in front of a guy like Kyle Lowry because he is so quick laterally with the ball. And the Warriors decide to take their first time out here. And it seems these players are getting more and more athletic, Steve. So much of that is modern conditioning, core strength, off-season workouts, things that probably didn't happen when you were playing, but just because of science have developed now. Uh, what did you do that helped you out the most and, and maybe some things you wish you had done? Well, you look at my body, Kevin. Yes, it didn't help me. I was this skinny rail guy. We had a bench press and we squatted. But guys right now are having more talking about core strength, yoga, Pilates. I mean, they're doing so much that it's totally different. I wish I would have been a guy who spent more time on his body versus my game because it means a lot to be able to have that core strength. But I didn't think beach muscles, you really needed it to play the game, the basketball. Guys right now, it's their entire body and it's also their entire way they recover from the games of basketball. And I think that's why I wish I'd have worked on better. That word you just said, recover, the recovery process, I think, is even more scientifically advanced now than it was when you played, correct? Yes. Kevin, example for me, I just iced my knees. Guys now have hyperbaric chambers that they use, mm. and a lot of guys have them in their homes. Here's Pirtle following the score by Golden State. Pirtle sets the pick for Miles. Off to a good start as he hits his first shot attempt. Great job of screening there. Nice job to take it to the rim and get the finish. Here is Livingston. And looking at his production, he averages a little more than seven points a game. And a foul called on the shot. Got him on the way up that time, so he'll shoot two right here. You know the Raptors have the advantage of continuity. There's a trust and an understanding they share Helps them win a lot of games. The Warriors shooting their third and fourth free throw shots of the night. The first one at the line is good. And we can talk about the continuity and maturity of this Raptors team. Is there a flip side to that, Steve? Does that limit their upside? Well, Kevin, is interesting. This front office has brought in some nice young pieces. I wouldn't write off their upside. They can improve if those younger guys make some strides. So he gets them both. 
And here are the Raptors now. Seven point differential. Here's Van Vliet. He's covered by Livingston. Here's Miles. And oh boy, a lot of contact there, but he gets the call and will shoot two. They get Andre Iguodala. Well over a decade in the NBA for C.J. Miles, taken straight out of high school by the Jazz back in 2005. And he's just now entering his 30s. A good floor spacer and solid defender at the two or three spot. Two shots. And the first one drops. And Miles drops them both. And that's the norm for him. He's pretty much automatic when he's at the line. Iguodala kicks it to Looney. Now the dish to West. And the call will be against Sean Livingston. That's his first foul. Takes the 13-footer. And, and trailing here in the first, you'd like to see them be a little more aggressive on the offensive glass. Got to be on the lookout for Pirtle crashing the glass, using his body to wreck the defense on the boards. Well, his sophomore season at Utah, Jakob Pirtle led the Pac-12 in field goal percentage at over 68%. Once he developed his left hand, defenders couldn't do anything to stop him. Mind the lane. Mind the lane. One shot. And Steve Pirtle was a dominant low post scorer in college. Can he replicate that, you think, in the NBA? You know, I think it's going to be hard. Post offense is losing favor in this NBA. You love a big man with soft fans and the ability to finish around the basket, but he has to develop some kind of jump shot. McCaw misses. Toronto trailing. Swiped it away. And it's the Warriors on the break. Iguodala is running. Here's Van Vliet. Looking for his first basket still on this one. Back to Miles. He nails it, and we're tied up. And they repeatedly probed inside in the first half, guys, and, and it's paid off. There's a screen to the inside. Here's Livingston, and that time also a missed shot. A yeah, blown opportunity after the two-man game creates a terrific look. That's how it's drawn up. That is everything but the finish. Now here's Livingston. The shot's good. And no doubt both teams competing at a high level, but the consistency has been lacking here. Another lead change. I like to fight in these clubs. Neither side willing to give an inch. We'll see how it turns out. Punishing players in the league. Steve, you know that, who will just hound that offensive glass. Who are your top picks for the best offensive rebounders right now in the league? I think Andre Drummond, Dwight Howard, uh, Kenneth Faree, some of those guys that just attack the glass. DeAndre Jordan, um, some of those guys are just relentless. Zach Randolph doesn't do it with a lot of athleticism, but he great, gets great position. Those guys have a knack of getting offensive rebounds. And they can just read it well, right? A lot of guys just read these rebounds the right way. They know where that bounce is going to go, the angle of the shot and everything. Oh! Oh! Way up there. 
And just a spectacular play from Iggy there. Seeing a path to the basket and just taking off towards the rim. That was a terrific replay brought to you by Under Armour. Another Unleash Chaos moment. They get it back. Myers. Oh, and he plucks it off the glass. Wow. Looney kicks to McCaw. The shot, no good. And it's the Raptors taking it the other way. Right, left side. Raptors moving the ball around. To the middle, Igudala with the steal. Now, here's Livingston. Defense is right there. Igudala, the pass to McCaw. Over right. Offline with the baseline jump. Toronto's gone. One of three from beyond the arc so far in the game. That's tipped. The tenacity of Looney there. Swatting the shot back and showing off his defensive chops. Twenty-three seconds left here in the first quarter. Miles, that's good. Golden State's gone four or five from three-point land to get things going here in the first. Igudala with a screen on Miles. Igudala outside. Here's West. Uses the glass to finish the layup. West has got his second basket of the night. It's been all about Stephen Curry for the Golden State Warriors. He notched eight points in the quarter and has that terrific basketball instinct on display. And we'll be right back after this. And work ethic, a big part of Steph Curry's success, as he was not a highly regarded five-star recruit coming out of high school. There's obviously ways that you can get better as a player from year to year and find different ways to show you know, what you're capable of. And that's kind of how you know, my story unfolded from high school to now, is just adding a little bit of piece here, piece there every single year. And he's certainly become not only a complete player, but the kind of true star guys that every team is looking to build around. You know, when he was drafted, Steph was viewed by most scouts as a great shooter. Not a centerpiece, but boy, were they wrong. And the second quarter getting underway. No team gaining an edge so far. And the Warriors guys, what jumps out to you in this game, uh, stats-wise? Well, I mean, they just got hot early from beyond the arc, and, and we'll just have to wait and see if they can keep that going. They also want to be unpredictable, mix up the play calling, keep the defense guessing. They've got C.J. Miles. Pirtle is out there with Wright. And it's Siakam in at the four-man position. That's the group for Toronto to start the second quarter. Huge hole in the defense, that possession. He didn't waste any time cutting through it. Wants to screen on right. Rest outside. Lots of room. That shot, no good. And Toronto will go the other way with it. Miles with it. And it's Iguodala picking him up. And it's the Warriors on the break. And we've got an update here, so let's check in with David Aldridge reporting from the sideline. Well, guys, Raptors coach Dwayne Casey talked about the chemistry on his team. He said, we couldn't be better. There's no ego, no hidden agendas. Guys understand their roles. Kyle Lowry told me, we're a complete team, 15 deep, and we really mean that. You never know whose time it's going to be. Kevin? And DA depth is a crucial part of any team's success. No one you can rely on your teammates to step up is huge. Passes it to McCaw. Here's Looney. From deep, Igudawa. His second shot goes in. Off to a good start, two for two. Andre getting the offensive juices flowing. Just a confident player who likes taking those type of shots. And right kicks to Miles. Here's Van Vliet. He's covered by Livingston. Six to shoot. Bertle sets the pick for right. He can't get it to go. Warriors leading by seven. And with the Warriors, their ability to score in bunches really is unmatched throughout the league. They'll be going along with the team, and all of a sudden they have that 20-point lead in like three minutes. 
they can happen so fast that I think at times the other teams are shell shocked. Here's Siakam. Lands soft on the front of the rim and drops. Siakam's got his first basket of the night. Golden State's gone a terrific five of six from beyond the arc in this game. Now here's Livingston, guarded closer. Goes to the reverse layup and drops it in. Livingston's got four points this quarter. And there's a pattern starting to take shape here. They're working it inside and getting good shots from close range. So it's Toronto now. They trail by nine points. So timeout called here, the first for Toronto. Well, you watch the all-around game of Sean Livingston, and there's a lot to like. Very soft on his turnaround and pull-up shots. Great vision, solid defender. He pretty much does everything well. And with Livingston, you have to remember that his career was nearly ended by a devastating knee injury. Many players wouldn't have attempted to come back from an injury like that, but Steve, he has, and he has found success. Kevin, it's hard not to cheer for a guy like Sean Livingston who has gone through so much. You wonder how great he could have been if the injury never happened. I see him. He could have been playing or would have been an all-star in this game. And it's a completely new group for Toronto. Five on the clock. Lowry drives in, shoots over Curry. Lowry can't get it to go. Warriors leading by nine. Here's Durant. And a foul called on the shot. Got him on the way up that time, so he'll shoot two right here. You watch Kevin Durant and the way he just rises up so easily, Steve, with his soft touch, he can absolutely be unguardable, even if you're willing to throw double and triple teams his way. You know, Durant's height, shooting, and mobility are just too much for one defender to deal with. On any given possession, he can create a good look out of nothing. It's why he's one of the greatest scorers to ever play. That's good from Durant. Steve, you are known for your three-point shooting, but as more and more teams look to space the floor and shoot threes, We've heard some legends, uh, like Isaiah Thomas, for instance, complain that everyone's playing the same. What do you think about that? You know, me and Isaiah, we've definitely talked about it. And I look at it, yes, we have some guys that's multi-talented, but everybody can't shoot threes. If you're a good guy to be able to knock down with a high percentage, shoot the three. But if you're a mid-range guy, you can still be an all-star shooting the mid-range. Play to your strength, work on that shooting threes. But I just hate when five, six, seven guys, everybody's running to that line, and that's all we're seeing. You got to defend, you got to rebound, you got to block shots, you got to do other things because that's still the way you can win the game by doing all things, not just shoot threes. And really, having the best teams in history always had guys that can do different things a ball handler, a rebounder, a, a screener, a, a long shooter. Yeah. It's always a combination of all those things instead of everybody doing the same You're thing. You're so right, Kevin. And even though we've been in this three point air in the last two or three years, rebounding the basketball and defending still can win basketball games for you. Here's DeRozan. That one off the back iron and out. Boy, he loves that mid-range jumper. Just fails to create enough room to operate. Yeah, they're going to have a nice little run here. Raptors trail by 13. They need a bucket in a big way here to regain some confidence. Lowry dishes to Ibaka. And he's still waiting to make his first shot for the night. Now 0 of 4. Curry kicks to Thompson. To the inside, it's stolen by Valanciunas. It's DeRozan with the drive, and finished off by DeRozan. That's what I like to see from DeMar DeRozan. He isn't selling for a jumper. He is going to the rim today. Greg, when you watch DeMarcus Cousins play, you can see the beating he takes in the post, can't you? Yeah, and that's just how it goes with star centers with the size and activity of Cousins. Just like Shaq in the sense, big bruising centers are hard to officiate. Uh, other players can lay into them and not even make a dent, but anyone else, it would be a foul. Two, two.
And the first one at the line is good. Yeah, and Cousins with his physical style always among the league leaders in free throws. And Cousins drops them both. And you look at the Raptors, one of the top teams in the East, Greg, but do they have a chance to go all the way? I think they're a threat to make the finals. Can, can they win it all? Uh, they may be a piece or two away, but still a young and aggressive core. They continue to try to add pieces, and this is a group that has proven they want to win and win now. Green, the screen. There's the screen. It's stolen by Lowry. Inside. Wants to get it to DeRozan and does. Hammers the alley-oop through. Keep your head on a swivel with DeRozan on the floor. He'll finish way up top with an alley-oop. And here is Curry. He's got eight. Outside Durant. Three-pointer. And it's out of bounds. The Raptors will take it the other way. And look now at the four areas where shots can come from. The paint, mid-range, and shots from deep all broken down for the Raptors. And you can see how important those inside baskets are. This is a team that loves to work the ball inside, whether the entry pass or off of a drive. They like to feed on those high-percentage looks. Raptors trail by 11. Kabaka with a screen on green. Outside Lowry. Here's Ananobi. 14 points from him the last game against Cleveland. Toronto calls timeout. Yeah, I mean, it's an opportunity to kind of regroup and, and discuss ways to maximize these possessions. The reason why is you like to give value every time down the floor, but that does take a lot of discipline. When you watch the Warriors play, their offense is a work of art. There is so much player movement and passing, it's impossible to cover. And the shooting they have, it just puts it over the top. Here's DeRozan. Off the mark, had a chance to trim it to single digits. Here's Thompson. Good, and it's Green picking up the assist. Thompson's got the lead up to 13 now for the Warriors. Taking the contact, almost using it to his advantage. Clay able to convert. And Steve, the common mistake fans have with the Warriors is thinking they only make threes to score. It's a combination of a lot of things, and, and I think it just overwhelms defenders. You know, one thing that comes to mind to me is they pick out the Warriors in mismatches or lose a defender on great streams. They're amazing at that. They force defenders to make a ton of split-second decisions. One mistake, and it's easy for them to score. DeRozan passes to Valanciunas. That's basket number two with his third shot off to a fast two for three. When you earn your keep inside, you get used to fighting through contact. Valanciunas getting it done. Thompson outside. They set the pick. Here's Durant. And it's Toronto with the rebound. Outside DeRozan. There's the feed to Lowry. Alan Junis with a screen on Curry. Now the pass to Ananobi. Six to shoot. Kicks it to DeRozan. Had a chance there to cut it to single digits, but it's off target. Warriors leading by 11. The drive by Cousins. And then Cousins with the dunk. And Green is always looking to swing the ball for the best open shot available. And here are the Raptors now. They've been struggling here on offense. Yeah, a bit of a dry spell for sure. Feeds to Ibaka. Lowry kicks to Valanciunas. Shoots over Cousins. No good from Valanciunas. Just a solid performance on the interior. The rebounding has been off the charts. And after Kevin Durant made his decision to lead the Oklahoma City Thunder, he instantly became one of the most polarizing players, it seemed, Greg, in the NBA. 
Uh, listen, Kevin Durant has always been a star in this league, but now he's become the story. It's something that he can handle but doesn't try to seek out. Well, was able to prove all the naysayers wrong and, and just having another amazing season. That's good from Durant. And they have yet to miss a shot from the line here this quarter. And so Durant nails them both. He's in attack mode, drawing contact now, getting to the line, something he didn't do at all in the first quarter to the paint and stolen by Cousins here's Green and a great assist by Curry as that one goes in Curry's got three assists in the game Alan Junis with a screen on Curry here's Lowry and it's in there Larry on the pick and roll draws so much attention because he is so good at finishing the play himself. Curry kicks to Durant. Outside Green. Let's it go from the wing. Durant, no good. Raptors trail by 15, and there's the call on Clay Thompson. That'll be his second foul of the game. You know what? Tried to step in and cut him off, but just didn't get there quick enough. Toronto calls timeout. And Valanchun is far from a finished product, Steve. His coaches and teammates feel he will get better, but in your opinion, where does he need to improve? I think on a defensive end, he does a nice job of blocking shots, but I would love to see him in rotations being able to be there a little bit earlier. And then on the offensive end, extend his range a little bit more and also have somewhat of a go-to move down on the low block. Taking high percentage shots has been this group's specialty. On your screen now are this month's field goal percentage leaders. Fourth, DeMarcus Cousins. It would be hard to imagine him shooting the ball much better than he has. He has been on fire. Rosen dishes to Valanciunas. On the rebound goes to the Warriors. Cousins has got rebound number eight now on the night. It's a plus five advantage for them in rebounding after that one. Thompson outside. So the whistle blows on the shot and two free throws for the contact right there. You know, for all the great things that Draymond Green does on the basketball floor, perhaps his greatest asset, Steve, is his ability to be a leader. Other MVPs and All-Stars will defer to him to set up the defense and get going on offense. You know, Kevin, that's what we do at Michigan State. That's the kind of player and leader that Draymond has been his whole career. Doesn't care about stats, only cares about winning. Willing to step up and take the big shot as well. That free throw, no good. With the way the Warriors romped in the playoffs and how stacked their team is, Steve, is a team like Golden State or really any team this talented good for the NBA? It's a question that was asked a lot last season and will get asked a lot this season. I love the way this team plays. I think they play with such greatness and unselfishness. All the other 29 teams, they just have to catch up. Good on the second free throw. And after the Raptors were swept in the 2017 conference semifinals, do you guys get the sense that Coach Dwayne Casey's on the hot seat? You know, I don't think so. I think Casey already survived a changing of the guard in the front office. He doesn't feel the pressure to keep his job, just the pressure to do his job, putting his players in the best position to compete. And it's DeRozan missing. You know, a little off his game this quarter. Still trying to find a rhythm, though. And it's Green missing. And, and, and typically, he has the touch to finish when he's in tight, but not sure on that possession. Lowry has the open look. Hits it from three-point range. 
Lowry's got five points in the quarter. Great heads up look there from DeRozan to get his teammate an easy basket. Here's Livingston, and he throws it down hard with one hand. And, folks, he does more than just put two points onto their lead. He does it with a little bit of flair. Uh -huh, he sure does. You're right. It's a dazzling move to the bucket for him. The fans really get their money's worth when they get to see him make plays like that. And maybe that'll trigger them. Impossible not to get pumped up after that. Yeah, well, you can see the immediate reaction of the guys in the bench. They are pumped up. Green, the pass to Iguodala. Good, and it's Green picking up the assist. Eight points for Andre Iguodala. And started hot, and he's only gotten harder. And let's catch up with our sideline reporter, David Aldridge. Guys, Kevin Durant is a unique player. LeBron James said he's a seven-footer with six-foot ball handling skills, a jump shot, and athleticism. It's never been done in our league. Never had a guy that's seven foot and can do all that, so it sets him apart. Kevin, I'm six feet tall, and I can broadcast. <laughs> you can, and you can write. And by the way, you're in the Hall of Fame. DA, thank you. From deep green, and the foul called on DeMarcus Cousins. That is his first foul of the game. So both teams changing it up here. Raptors trail by 13. Here's Van Vliet. Right now averaging about five points a game. Right, right side. Here's Van Vliet. He's covered by Livingston. Five to shoot. Pass to Siakam. And he comes off the screen to bury the jump shot. Siakam's got his second bucket tonight. Pirtle setting the quality screen. Made himself into a brick wall to create space. Two-second difference between shot clock and game clock. Iguodala kicks it to Looney. Back to Iguodala. And he was fouled on the way up. Two free throws now for him. Great drive to the rim by Iggy. His aggressiveness really forcing the D to get physical with him. This is his first free throw of the game. And that one falls for Iguodala. The free throw line is something that Iggy needs to work on. He's hit a miss from there. Both good from the line that time. Five seconds left to play here in the half. It's tipped from deep three-point range. And so it's the Golden State Warriors looking at a 13-point lead heading into the next quarter. What a night they've had in terms of their shooting. Everything dropping in for them. And now we'll send it over to David Aldridge, who is standing by courtside. David. Thanks, Kevin. Alongside Steve Kerr and Coach, what is the offensive approach going to be in the second half? Well, we just have to do what we do, move the ball um, and wear them down with our ball movement, our cutting, and our spacing, and set better screens, all the, all the usual stuff. Yeah, it always seems to work out for you in the long run. Thanks, Steve. Back to you, Kevin. Thank you, David, and we'll be right back after halftime to start the third quarter. See you in just a bit. And now, the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hello, folks. Welcome back. Ernie Johnson here with Shaquille O'Neal and Kenny the Jet Smith. This is the halftime show on 2K Sports. Golden State found themselves in a close game in the first. At the end of the period, they held a two-point lead. The second quarter was where they really opened things up. They were by far the stronger team, both defensively and when they had the ball. Their 13-point halftime lead, no accident. Hey, big fella, what's your take on Golden State so far? 
You know what, Ernie? I got to stand up on this one. I salute to their bench. Man, once the starters came out, man, the others just came to life. You got to love seeing that kind of contribution come from the others. Man, they look beautiful tonight. Looking at Toronto, Kenny, your thoughts. Well, I think their problem is rebounding, Ernie. You know, when you're trying to come back in a game, every possession counts because each possession can turn into points and you need to cut that deficit quickly. And we're just about ready for the start of the third quarter. Kevin Harlan standing by. We'll see you. Welcome back, everybody. Third quarter just about to get going here in what has been so far a runaway game. A fantastic game from DeMar DeRozan so far. I'll tell you what, he put together an entire highlight reel in that first half alone. Just a collection of spectacular dunks. There were some great Kodak moments there for sure. Hopefully, we'll see some more in this second half. Well, it's been a one-sided affair so far through the first two quarters, but there's plenty of time to mount a comeback. Warriors leading by 13, and on the floor for Steve Kerr as we get into the second half. Durant and Draymond Green, talented forward duo. The sharpshooters Curry and Thompson are at the one and the two, and it's Cousins in at the pivot spot manning the middle. The drive by Green, and he gets the friendly spin, and that one drops. Cousins has got the first field goal the second half for the Warriors. Outside DeRozan. He feeds it to Valanciunas. Pass to Ananobi. Green against Valanciunas. And that one is good with the extra effort on the glass. Valanciunas has got six. Gotta love the big man Valanciunas fighting for that extra chance and he was rewarded for his effort. The screen from Thompson. Durant just inside the line. Good, and it's Green picking up the assist. Green's got assist number five here tonight. Passes it to Ananobi. Screen by Ibaka. Floats one up. Offensive rebound. Warriors leading by 15. And the rejection by Ibaka. Great defense by Serge. A tremendous athlete. Blessed with insane length and leaping ability. You know, coming out of the half, you want to set the tone for the rest of the game. But going one for four is the wrong way to do it. Here's Thompson. Alan Junis grabs the board. Alan Junis has got rebound number five here tonight. Lowry for three. The putback. It's good on the putback. Excellent timing on the offensive glass, and Ibaka takes advantage of the second chance opportunity. Thompson dishes to Green. Back to Thompson. Jacks up a three. Gets the three-pointer to fall. He's got ten. And each bucket at this point feels like a backbreaker. Showing no mercy. Double-digit lead and still putting it on him. Down low. And he's fouled on the shot. One free throw coming up. They should continue to get the ball inside. The defense struggling to contain them. And Valanciunas out of Lithuania, the fifth overall pick back in 2011. Yeah, he's still quite young. You know, a lot of talent offensively. Defensively, he, he's probably had less of an impact, but that's where he has to take the next step. Shooting one. For a player his size, Valanciunas has always been a good free throw shooter. We won't see a hack of Val anytime soon. Green, the screen. Curry kicks to Thompson. And it's out of bounds. The Raptors will take it the other way. And now that we have a chance, let's show you the NBA's top thieves. This is the list of this month's steals leaders. Second, Draymond Green. Really been fantastic defensively this run for him. He's had more than his share of steals. And now he's looking to get more. And the Raptors call time here. Yeah, I mean, just wants to make sure everybody's on the same page here going forward. 
you know, sometimes the best way to approach it, let your guys know what they're doing well and give them one or two things that they could have done better. And we see a chart here for the shooting performance so far for DeRozan. Well, that is what it looks like when you are in the zone. Uh, he's been very efficient with his scoring and is leading the way for his team on offense. With, with every make, you can see the confidence growing. And I don't think he'll slow down anytime soon. Lowry against Curry. The offensive rebound from Dallin Tunis. So the whistle blows on the shot and two free throws for the contact right there. When a guy as big as Valanciunas gets the ball that deep quite often, the only answer is to foul him. The Raptors have been solid at the line so far. Four for four. And the first one drops. Alan Junis hits them both. And a $30 million, 65,000 square foot practice facility for the Raptors opening back in 2016. Smitty, have you had a chance to check it out yet? Yeah, I have not, but I've got a chance to see pictures. And as much as the players benefit, another key feature is the interactive operations room for management. A wall and conference table made up of giant touchscreens. Wow. Allowing them to pull up numbers and stats. It's like something out of a movie. And DeRozan throws it down hard. Wow, you knew that DeRozan has that in him. Didn't think he pulled it off in a game, though. That was a great angle we just saw, courtesy of Under Armour. Another Unleash Chaos moment. The screen from Thompson. Outside, Green. Here's Curry. And the rejection by Valanciunas. Here's Ananobi, defended by Durant. Green against Ibaka. And Lowry gets it to go. Lowry showing how crafty he can be with that hoop inside. Warriors leading by nine. Curry passes to Cousins. They set the pick. Here's Durant. Good. And it's Cousins picking up the assist. And that's 13 points for Kevin Durant up by a bunch he's still pushing the action trying to impose his will with this big of a deficit in the score you think the losing team would be playing harder nope the opposite his lack of consistency with his shot tonight it's held them back it's thompson off the drive and it goes out of bounds last touch by lowry and we've got a chance now to get caught up on how the standings are looking in the west as we make the push through midseason you look at Golden State. They're looking extremely sharp right now. Poised in the top spot and playing very well. And checking out Minnesota right on their heels as they've got the next best record. And for the Warriors, they've had just the kind of season you knew they were capable of. I mean, they've got all the talent in the world, but how about maximizing it to the fullest? That's been the key. This coaching staff knows what their strengths are. They play to those strengths. That's how they've gotten the most out of their talent. Here's Durant, and he's fouled on the shot. One free throw coming up. That's all confidence right there. He knows he's in a groove, and they've got this team on its heels. And it won't be easy for the Warriors to keep everyone on their team for the foreseeable future, but as long, Steve, as their core stays together, they'll be a title threat, no doubt. Are we looking at a dynasty here, Smitty? You know, Kevin, they have a chance. Their core players on this team, they work so well together. They will always be in contention. They will be able to sign vets for cheap for a long time. It could be a while before someone takes them down. The free throw drops for Durant. Kevin Durant for his career, almost 90% at the free throw line. He'll make you pay. 
Here's Valanciunas. Green with the rebound. Green's got six rebounds now in the game. Durant attacking. Can't hit that one. So the Raptors will take it the other way. Here's Ananobi. And looking at his production, he averages a little more than seven points a game. Screened by Valanciunas. And DeRozan kicks to Valanciunas. Back to DeRozan. Trying his luck deep. Kept alive. And count it. And a chance for one more at the free throw line. And, and you like to see since the half now, he's finally starting to come around. The Raptors have been excellent at the free throw line here today. A flawless six for six. And they've shot the ball well this season in, in, in terms of their attempts. 81%. Catching up on the changes for Golden State. David West, he's checked in for Cousins. Kavon Looney comes in for Draymond Green. And it's Patrick McCaw in for Thompson. One shot, find the lane. This is as good as it gets from the charity strike here in the second. Warriors leading by nine. Curry with it. He's got ten. Here's Durant. So he gets the whistle. Contact on the way up and two shots coming up. And Smitty, you were able to play a couple seasons with Steve Kerr when you were both in San Antonio. What was your time together like there? How do you think he's been influenced by his San Antonio time? Well, it was a great time. He's a great teammate. I think he's been influenced by Popovich's uh, attention to details. Both are very measured to their approach to things. But the one thing you have to really say that you really link those two together, they are funny, funny, funny. C.J. Miles, he's checked in for DeMar DeRozan. And the Warriors also making a change. Livingston's checked in. Well, every so often a team will have a home game and see their stadium flooded with fans for the away team. Happens when a especially good, popular team is playing a team kind of uh, in, in, a, in a bad part of their schedule or maybe just at a, in a bad part of their development. Smitty, do players notice when this happens? And does it bother them at all? Yeah, players notice it. It does bother you. It happened to me when in the Chicago Bulls era. You're here, people cheering more for Michael Jordan than their own players. It's because people love to see winners. People have their favorite players, and a lot of people right now look at it as they want to come see their favorite player. As a player, you just got to go out, beat Michael Jordan, go out and win, and use the fans to turn into your favor. That is really good work there on the offensive glass. West a screen on right. McCaw kicks to Livingston. Here's Looney. That drops, and it comes off the assist from Livingston. Looney's got his first basket. Sean Livingston's court vision is amazing. Being able to hit the open guy right on stride. Van Vliet passes to Valanciunas. Wright sets a screen. Here's Van Vliet. He's covered by Livingston. Valanciunas sets a screen for Miles. But they'll get another chance. Wow, another opportunity. Just everything going their way. Pretty much the story of this game. Stolen by Miles. Fires from 18. It's no good. He is 4 for 10 in the game. Lobbed up there for Durant. That shot off. Raptors trail by 13. Guys, they're looking for a way to score here. Yeah, they've had a tough time taking the lid off. Screen by Valanciunas. They set the screen. Back to right. Just four to shoot. And it's denied. Here's Durant. And the jam by Kevin Durant. With his long strides, Durant can gather at the three-point line and still get all the way to the rim. Toronto's gotten blank from three-point land so far in the third. Still 0 for 3. Van Vliet kicks to Miles. They grab their own miss. And it's sent back by West. Here's McCaw. Let's take a moment to check out Kevin Durant here. 
this last month he's been positively spectacular first and free throw percentage and not many players convert opportunities inside as well as he top 15 in field goal percentage and it's nice when you have the NBA's best free throw shooter just keep the ball in his hands in clutch situations he's been completely automatic this season that one is off and Toronto making a change here. Myrtle's checked in. The Warriors also with a sub. Iguodala's checked in. So neither attempt will fall that time for him. Raptors trail by 15. Here's right. The shot goes down. Very quick possession right there. Here is Livingston. 11 points in the game. Pulls up on the wing, and it's in off the backboard. Livingston's got 13 points. A hey, beautiful bucket from Livingston. He is very skilled at draining shots under pressure. Here's Siakam. It's rebounded by Golden State. Their next game is at Quicken Loans Arena in Cleveland, taking on the Cavaliers. That puts them squarely in the middle of this five-game road trip. Gets it to go from beyond the arc. Such a sweet stroke from Andre on the three ball. Always a danger to light it up from there. Now here's Wright, currently averaging almost six points a game. And the pass to Van Vliet. They set the pick. Just five on the clock. And he connects on the jumper. The screen did the trick. Van Vliet's got his second bucket of the night. Superb pick there that allowed his teammate to get open and get a clean look at the basket. In the corner, Iguodala with it. No stopping him there. Jams it in as he's fouled. A chance now for a three-point play. That one on Jakob Pertl. And for the last few seasons, we've seen where Andre Iguodala's role on offense has diminished. You know, he still contributes, but tends to defer a bit more there. And one thing you can say, though, defensively, still at an elite level in terms of his versatility. One shot. And that one falls for Iguodala. Perhaps, Greg, the biggest asset Iguodala brings to a team is his ability to defend. I mean, he just has great timing for when to go for the steal. I mean, he can still move his feet well and, and can guard anybody, but the versatility to guard point guards to power forwards is something that makes him special. And now a chance to take a look at the shot chart for the Warriors. And when you come into a game with the mindset of going right at the rim and not settling for outside shots, this is what your shot chart will look like. Every chance they've had to either attack the paint or play back to the basket, they've taken it. And it's been a complete success thus far. Free throw drops for right. And so right nails both of them. And they came out of the locker room after halftime with a much more physical approach than what we saw in that first half. 139 left in the third. West dishes to Iguodala. Pass to McCaw. Puts up a three. And Pirtle pulls it down. Here's Van Vliet. Five points in the game. Dishes it to Pirtle. And it's going to be a three-second call. 
And now let's highlight the highest scoring teams in the NBA. The Warriors, number one. Fifth, the Raptors. You know, both these teams can beat you in so many ways, but it's usually by outscoring you. They possess a whole lot of offensive firepower. Livingston passes to Looney. McCaw kicks to Livingston. Toronto grabs the miss. Pirtle's got rebound number five here tonight. Miles against Igudala. Here's Pirtle. Somehow ignores the tight D and gets the way up. Pirtle's got five points so far. Really nice work. Pirtle going to town on the weak defense down in the paint. Pick by West. Here's Livingston. From the left block, he sends it through. He's got 15. And boy, did he ever sell the pump fake. Worked to absolute perfection. It's Miles on the wing. Pass to Van Vliet. The putback and the foul called on Pascal Siakam. That's foul number two for him. Warriors leading by 17. Livingston kicks to Igudala. West dishes to Livingston. On the wing, it's Igudala. Back to Livingston. To the wing right side. McCaw. And a miss there on the triple. Here's Wright. And a lot of contact on that one, so he'll shoot two here. These are his third and fourth free throw attempts of the game. And really, guys, his percentage from the line at 70 isn't quite up to snuff. Free throw drops for right. And so right nails both of them. And so it's the Golden State Warriors riding a 15-point lead at the end of the quarter. Their defense has been terrific in this game. And we've got more NBA action on 2K Sports coming your way after this break. Now let's listen in to head coach Steve Kerr. To the next guy, drive and kick, let it come out in the wash, all right? And Steve Kerr asking his guys to simply run their offense, share the basketball. Yeah, and don't just settle for tossing it around the horn. Attack the defense, play inside out when you can. And we welcome you back as we get going here in the fourth quarter. The final quarter of play can change everything. Wright is out there with Lowry. Then there's C.J. Miles. Then there's Pirtle. And it's Siakam in at the four spot. So that's the five in the game for Toronto. Curry, good. Uh, assists like that have typified their effort today. Terrific ball movement. Raptors trail by 17. Right outside. Back to Lowry. The Warriors pull it in. West has got his fourth rebound in this one. Looney passes to West. Here's Curry. And it's Lowry with the rebound. And the Raptors shooting 40% from the field. 13 feet away. And he comes up with the deuce. Nice read there from Lowry. Saw that his best option was to pull up for the jumper. Curry against Lowry. Jumper off the screen. Again, Curry missing. 
Now here's Wright, guarded closely. Counted, and the Warrior lead has been cut down to just 12 points with the basket from Kyle Lowry. There it is. Just lined it up and knocked it down. His first three of the half, second of the game. Curry's shot is good. Stephen Curry mixing up his offense. Now getting a chance to score in the paint. For Toronto, they've gone two of three from the field to get the fourth quarter started. Lowry drives in, and that one clearly a foul. Gets the whistle, and two shots coming up. It's going to be on David West. Two shots, gentlemen. Two. You know, Smitty, you love the grit of Kyle Lowry. Six foot nothing, but he holds his ground. A hard-nosed defender. He puts his body on the line all the time. You see him taking a lot of charges. Great quickness, too, and anticipation to rack up a lot of steals. And the first one at the line is good. And Kyle Lowry over the last few seasons slimmed down about 15 pounds. He's, uh, Greg, been playing the best basketball of his career. No doubt. He's still got that low center of gravity, you know, almost like a bowling ball. He just gets under his man. And his strength and tenacity enable him to create chaos at both ends of the floor. And so Lowry nails both of them. In a league full of talented point guards, sometimes Lowry's efforts, they get overlooked. But he's a game changer. And the basket by Curry. Early in this quarter, he's been aggressive and selective with his shots. Tremendous efficiency. Raptors trail by 14. And there's the call on Clay Thompson. That's his third foul of the game. Got a piece of it. Pirtle kicks to Lowry. Green against Ibaka. Back to Lowry. Shot clock at six. And he could not get that one to go. What a contact, and he'll go to the line for two. You know he's only six feet tall. Kyle Lowry, though, is fearless attacking the rim. Free throw drops for Kyle Lowry. And so he makes both from the line. See, now he's getting defenders back on their heels a little bit. Getting to the foul line here in the second half. On the wing, Thompson. Back to Curry. And Cousins kicks to Iguodala. And a miss there on the triple. And the great shooters know when they've got enough opening to go for the three. I didn't think it was a bad choice on that possession. Now the dish to Pirtle. Ibaka. And Ibaka is right there. You have to box him out or he's going to beat you to the glass on both sides of the floor. Warriors leading by 10. Curry dishes to Cousins. Plays it up and banks it in. And they're beginning to just flat out fall apart defensively right now, especially on the interior. DeRozan against Thompson. From 17 feet out, DeRozan gets the bucket. DeRozan's got 23. DeMar DeRozan, one of the best in the business in knocking down the mid-range jump shot. Screen by Cousins. Here's Igudala and the rejection by Ibaka. Thompson inside the line. Good, and it's Green picking up the assist. Green's got assist number seven for him tonight. DeRozan passes to Ibaka. Here's Pirtle and the rejection by Cousins. And at nearly seven feet tall, Cousins is a legitimate shot-blocking threat, using that reach to deter shots. 
And, and this is one of those times where the coach has got to preach, be unselfish. And we don't know that he hasn't. Maybe it's been falling on deaf ears. Guys taking ill-advised jump shots. And the rejection by Cousins. Curry kicks to Cousins. It's Iguodala with the drive. And Pirtle pulls it down. Pirtle's got 10 rebounds here tonight. So active. Green with the block. Green really puts forth a ton of effort on the defensive side. Always a shot-blocking threat. Warriors leading by 12. Lays it up off the glass. For Toronto, they've gone 4 of 10 here in the final period. Not the time to go cold. And DeRozan kicks to Lowry. Bertle sets the pick for Lowry. Back to DeRozan. And the dunk by DeRozan. It seems that DeRozan has been involved in every score out there in this one, just zipping around the floor. Outside, Green. Trying to find Curry. He's got it now. No good. Shot missing. And it's the Raptors taking it the other way. Tries to save it. To the inside. Pirtle with the ball. Cousins is there. And the dunk by Pirtle. Pirtle showing a little speed and some handles on that drive. Green with a screen on low. Screen by Cousins. Here's Thompson. It's hauled in by the Raptors. They're going to have to make a pretty big comeback here. I think it's be a mistake to let the shot clock in under 10 seconds from here on out. Outside Lowry. Bertle sets the pick for Lowry. Off the screen. And Serge Ibaka, the bucket on the assist by Lowry. Lowry's got assist number seven for him tonight. Warriors leading by eight. Now Curry. And here is Cousins. Curry dishes to Cousins. Thompson inside. DeRozan defending. The shot by Thompson, no good. DeRozan in the corner. From the baseline. Another shot. And no good that time. Nice D from Cousins. Out to Thompson. And oh boy, a lot of contact there, but he gets the call and will shoot two. Serge Ibaka picks one up there. And that's the problem with guarding Thompson. He is so versatile and can tack you on the drive in addition to his shooting ability. Well, when I look back at the career of Clay Thompson, you can't help but notice how much he's improved. Every season, Steve, he comes back with a new tool to score on offense and always has been strong, but even getting better on defense. You know, you love the greats. They can score at all three levels. He had the mid-range and obviously the three ball, but he two is shots. scoring now in the paint off the drive because of his improved ball handling, and he posts up extremely well for a guard. I love what he's brought to his game offensively. That free throw good from Thompson. You have to be cautious when guarding Thompson. He is so crafty at getting to the strike. Jonas Valanciunas, he's checked in for the Raptors. The Warriors also with a sub. Durant's checked in for Andre Iguodala. And so Thompson nails both of them. Oh, you just watch the way that Clay Thompson shoots, and you're surprised when the ball doesn't go in. I mean, one thing with Clay, too, in his shot, he believes it's always going to go in. More importantly, so does his teammates. And he's got that shooter's mentality where he just will continue to trust in his mechanics. And I don't think he gets enough credit for just how hard he works to maintain that shot. And the rejection by Cousins. Thompson with it. Now guarded by DeRozan. And it's out of bounds. The Raptors will take it the other way. An unforced error. I'm not sure what was he thinking. Raptors trail by 10. Alan Judas with a screen on Thompson. Here's DeRozan. And he's fouled pretty hard on that shot. But he's got the chance to pick up the points at the line. It's on DeMarcus Cousins. 
Make him foul you to stop you. DeRozan with the strength and vertical ability doing damage inside. And when you think about a slasher, a guy who makes his living attacking off the dribble, no better example than DeMar DeRozan. No good on the free throw. You know, Steve, DeRozan, a great ball handler for his size. He can isolate or work in the pick and roll. Does a nice job of coming off screens and rolls, being able to create for his teammates, and also a big-time slasher that can put you on a poster. He hits the second from the line. And really, DeMar DeRozan is a master at what he calls body hunting. Yeah, that ability to just kind of draw a foul. I think he and James Harden actually are the guys that have really kind of set the tone for how to create those opportunities to get to the line. Thompson, a master at positioning himself well down inside and schooling the defense. Raptors trail by 11. Lowry with the ball. Ibaka with the screen on Curry. Ibaka outside. To the middle. Here's Ananobi. Terrific assist. A nice finish. Solid play all around. And DeMar DeRozan always, Greg, among the league leaders in free throw attempts. And when you look at him, 6'7", 220 pounds with tremendous athleticism. He has got all the tools. Beyond, though, that attack mentality, He's a savvy basketball player. Those little shot fakes, his footwork, helped this guy live at the line. Great D that time from Green. Yeah, the aggressive D inside leads to a missed opportunity there. You know, he had terrific position. Does a good job of affecting the shot without fouling. And that fourth foul, guys, might force him to scale back the aggression from a defensive standpoint. He does not need, nor does the team need, number five. A free throw drop for DeRozan. Love how DeRozan has grown as a player, as a leader of this team. And he's done a great job learning how to get to the line more frequently. C.J. Miles, he's checked in for the Raptors. Both free throws, good from DeRozan. Warriors leading by nine. Now here's Curry. He dishes it to Cousins. Green the pass to Durant. And then Durant with the jam. The long strides of Durant gliding through the lane. Throw it down, big fella. And the Raptors call time here. We've seen Kevin Durant really having a great game. You know, this is the right move. Maybe a break in the action will cool him down. And now let's present our Jordan player of the game, DeMarcus Cousins. And guys, it's been a rugged brand of defense he's played. Uh, I don't know why they keep taking the ball at him. It. It, it seems like every time they have, he's come up with the rejection. And with every block, he's only gotten more and more fired up. Well, to come in here facing a hostile crowd and have a game like he's had, that's what separates the good players from the great players. All right, let's catch up with our sideline reporter, David Aldridge. Well, guys, I was able to listen in on what Dwayne Casey went over with his team. He is not happy with the turnovers. He said, we have got to get some shots. It's as simple as that, guys. Play smart and value the basketball. We'll see if the message sunk in, Kevin. All right, thank you, David. Warriors leading by 11. Thompson outside. He kicks it to Cousins. Here's the three, and it's Thompson that time on the assist by Cousins. Thompson's got 12 points in just the second half. 
DeRozan against Thompson. And he'll shoot free throws here. Clearly fouled on that shot that time. The whistle blowing. And when you have DeRozan looking to drive, it's hard to slow him down without committing a foul. That's good from DeMar DeRozan. And good on the second, so he makes them both. Warriors leading by 12. Right side Curry. The feed now to Durant. And Durant gets double teamed. And so it's Golden State with it. And Cousins kicks to Green. Lock at six. And there are the Warriors now with another bucket. Good luck trying to stop Draymond that deep inside. So forceful in how he converts his looks down there. Lowry against Curry. Lowry dishes to Miles. Kicks to DeRozan. Over Thompson. DeRozan's shot is off. Golden State's gone one and two from three-point range here in the fourth. For three, Durant, good. And it's Cousins picking up the assist. Cousins has got his fifth assist in this one. Raptors trail by 17. And, and so just rolling to the finish line now in what has been a very confident-looking performance for the Warriors. They enjoyed a big boost from the strong play of their bench. The, the subs came in and did their job. Those points off the bench were key to their victory. And this will make it 36 wins on the year for them. No doubt they came in very motivated to win this one and finish the season series at a game apiece. And you know, guys, what a nice performance it was for DeMarcus Cousins. When it comes to protecting the rim, there are numerous ways to do that. The most excited of those just send shots back, and that's what he did tonight in volume. And the ball goes out of bounds. Last touch by Cousins. So both teams changing it up here. Fifty two seconds left in the fourth quarter. Here's right passes to Van Vliet screened by Valanciunas. Five on the clock. Knocked away. And there's the shot clock violation. Couldn't get the shot off in time. There's 25 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Livingston kicks to McCaw. Feeds it to West. And the rejection by Valanciunas. You see the length of Valanciunas on display with that block. Just went up and got it. And it's Valanciunas finishing it off. You look at that lead pass there. He just has such a great feel for the game. Now Livingston. So we see the Warriors taking the game here. A solid win on the road for them. This building was dead silent by the time, G.A., this one wound down. And that's what you want to do. Take the crowd out of it by crunch time. Don't give them any chance to lift their team up at the finish. And a chance now to send it over to David Aldridge, standing by courtside. David. Thanks very much. Kevin, we expect big games for you. How do you put together four quarters of excellence like tonight? Well, I'm just playing off my teammates. I'm not trying to force anything. Uh, just take what the defense gives me and I'll uh, be aggressive. Yeah, you set the tone tonight and got the win. Thanks very much, Kevin. Back to you, Kevin. All right, David. Great job. Thanks so much.
And that's going to do it tonight, folks, for our broadcast. For Greg Anthony, Steve Smith, and David Aldridge, this is Kevin Harlan saying thanks for watching. See you next time.